There's nothing better than the excitement of going to see a highly anticipated movie in the theater. We've all been going to the theaters our entire life, whether it's with friends, family, or even by ourselves. There's so many great memories I have of going to the theater. My name is Rob Sanchez, and I'd like to discuss the evolution of the movie theater. In 1896, Thomas Edison opened up the first theater to show a motion picture. The theater was in Buffalo, New York, and housed 72 people, and it only cost a nickel. The first theaters to go mainstream, though, were called Nickelodeons. These were small storefront theaters that would charge just a nickel to view a short film. These Nickelodeons gained popularity quick, and by 1914, there were over 3,000 Nickelodeons in America. Now keep in mind, these movies people were watching at these Nickelodeons weren't the type of movies we see today. These movies were very short films and often just scenic movies. For instance, people would view 10 minutes of moving trains. But remember, this was big-time entertainment for America. People have never seen anything like this before. It wasn't until the 1920s that larger theaters started popping up. These theaters would show feature-length silent films, and to engage the moviegoers, the theater would offer live pianists or organ players to accompany the movies. Going to the theater during this time was considered something only for the low and working class. So in 1925, we started to see more upscale theaters opening up. They were called movie palaces, and they would offer larger seats, air conditioning, and even child care. The 1930s was a big decade for film, and we also started to see transformation in the theaters happening. With the addition of sound in films, theaters were now updating to a more modern style. The chairs were redesigned so that the seat would fold up, and we also had concessions starting in the movie theaters. By the late 1930s, theaters were now the norm. However, the African-American community had a difficult time enjoying the theaters the same way white Americans did. Many theaters would force African-Americans to sit in a segregated section. Some didn't let them in at all, or if they did, they would only allow them to come late at night after the last viewing for the white audience. During World War II in the 1940s, Americans used the theater to escape the horrors of the war. The government was asking the country to support their efforts and decided to put a war tax on theater tickets. The American people were all for it. In the 50s and 60s, and after the war ended, movie theaters took a hit as they were now competing with TVs. This is when we saw the biggest boom in drive-in theaters. Drive-ins were all the craze during this time, but TVs reigned supreme and theaters needed to up their game. Theaters started updating to widescreen, surround sound, and even experimenting with 3D. Multiplexes were also popping up in the late 60s, offering customers more than just one movie to choose from. In the 70s and 80s, this was kind of the dead era for theaters. There were some dollar theaters popping up that would show older movies for just a few bucks, but VCRs and cable TV were gaining traction by the 80s, and the dollar theaters faded pretty quickly by the 90s. The 90s into the 2000s, however, this is where we saw a massive transformation with theaters. They built out their concessions to offer more variety, and arcades were offered in most theaters to attract teenagers. IMAX starts to gain popularity in the 2000s, and theaters start updating their seats to recliners and offering assigned seating. In the 2010s, we have luxury theaters opening that offer full dinner and drink service. Some of them even offer beds as seating options. Theaters are now suffering again with the pandemic. They were shut down, and studios started releasing movies straight to streaming. It'll be interesting to see how the theaters bounce back, but when they do, I'll be the first one in line to buy my tickets.